All right, looks like we are live on Facebook. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever we are connecting with you. Super excited just to have a couple of moments of your time. Um, Kelly, why don't you kick us off? Tell us who you are sure. and just kind of get us started today. You bet. Well, hello, Idaho friends. My name is Kelly McGuire and I am on the Legal Voice Senior Leadership Team. We're actually um, a shared leadership team of three staff and um, working together to and with the rest of our staff to really move Idaho and Legal Voice forward. We're excited to be here. I love that so much, Kelly. And I know that that's a, a new thing that we're doing and kind of uncharted territories. And uh, that just really, I think, symbolizes how collectively our team works together. Um, Cause that's a new thing, right? They said the shared leadership team. It's absolutely new. And um, we've been learning along the way, but we've been supported by our board and supported by our staff and supported by our community. And that is what shared leadership really is, you know, the child of is all that collective goodwill and support and chipping in. So yeah, it's exciting. We're, we're really, we're really happy about it. It's been really fun to kind of see it transpire and how we're moving away from a more traditional or hierarchical method of, of um, movement and leadership in our organization. So I love our senior leadership team. Big fan of that. Uh, I'm Chelsea Giona Lincoln. She, hers, or they, them, or the pronouns I use. And um, of course, I'm here in Idaho, unceded ancestral land of the Shoshone Bannock, Shoshone Paiute tribes. Uh, right now called Caldwell is where I'm calling in from. And I actually came into Legal Voice a couple years ago, uh, so kind of the new kid on the block. Um, and I was actually brought on, uh, Kelly, you can help me remember, but I was brought on to support litigation cases. That's that right. That started doing in Idaho. And there was only one case at that time, right? There was yeah. just the one <laughs> before, case the before the cauldron boiled over, right? So I don't know if I'm the reason it escalated quickly. If we took the universe, <laughs> but I feel like it escalated quickly. So originally, yeah. I was brought on with Legal Voice team to help support the litigation happening in the state of Idaho, and what ended up transpiring was a need for some community organizing. Um, some activation engagement at the Capitol around lobbying uh, and things just again, like I said, escalated from there. I think that's just putting it mildly. Um, and what's been so tremendous is the way that Legal Voice as a whole, not only our leadership team, but all of the staff um, have really stepped into that and been uh, open to me having to maneuver and recalibrate and reassess really my job description and my job duties. It feels That's like right. on the turn of a dime sometimes, yeah. what did you say, Kelly? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now it's kind of a little bit of everything. I'm serving as Idaho's program manager, and that has been including some community organizing, supporting comms whenever needed, uh, lobbying, and um, some education while still also doing some litigation support as well um, with now what is multiple cases in Idaho. So I just really love and um, feel so held by the community at Legal Voice and the way that they've been willing to honor what Idaho needs so that we can get more work done and moving the needle forward. Um, and that has meant being flexible um, with my job description and duties. And I feel like that is something that just really reflects the culture at Legal Voice. And, you know, Kelly, I know you've been here a lot longer than I am. That's why I still said I'm kind of the new kid on the block. Um, can you just share with us a little bit of just about your journey with Legal Voice? and what Sure, like? sure. Um, well, I, I do want to say one thing that, you know, having Chelsea um, in Idaho, it was always a dream for us at Legal Voice to actually have people on the ground in other Northwest states. Legal Voice um, in, you know, more than 25 years ago decided that we wanted to be a regional organization and we really wanted to help uh, and work with communities in the Northwest states. And the work we were able to do without staff in each state has been limited and has been very focused on impact litigation and we have recognized that uh, impact litigation leaves a lot of 
people out. Um, you know, the law doesn't protect all communities. That that's a fact. We know that. And um, so, to be able to have Jen and Chelsea in Idaho supporting us and Legal Voice and the communities that they're in is just awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so, like Jess said, I have been at Legal Voice for a long time and <laughs> have seen a lot of transition and. I guess that's one of the things I'm most proud of at Legal Voice is that we do reflect on the work we do. We do reflect on how we might need to change and how we need to be nimble and flexible, like Chelsea said. But also recently, we've really been reflecting on the way that uh, the work that we've been doing has not touched all communities of women and it's it's something that we wanted to change. It's something that we wanted to address and, you know, acknowledge fully and also move forward in a different way so that we really are serving communities and hearing communities and moving from community spaces rather than coming in and offering ourselves as experts or what have you. So um, we've been centering race equity in the work that we do, we think about it as we strategizing as we're moving forward. Um, we still have the same expertise that we always did and we're able to apply that, but we're applying it in different ways. And we're really being conscious of how we are engaging with community. And that's a big shift for us. That's a big and exciting, especially for someone who's been here for so long, it's a new way of thinking about the work that we do and how we can really be a service to our whole community of supporters and fellow humans. So love it, love it. Yes, all of that. <laughs> I, and I just love um, picking up on that community piece, how centric it is to being um, thoughtful and conscientious and intentional mm -hmm. about um, leading with our impact, not just good intentions. And at the center of that, making sure the marginalized, the most marginalized among us, yeah. that their voices are appropriately represented at the table when we're making decisions about how to navigate moving forward. Um, and I feel like Legal Voice, us as a team, the senior leadership team, the board, everyone is just really leaning into that and continuously building that um, that muscle memory of what it means to put that first oh, every correct. time. Every yeah, meeting, every so staff cute. meeting, program meeting, we're always talking about so who's so first so impact, who should be leading this conversation, who's, whose voice isn't represented. And I really love that that's been um, transitioned over to Idaho as well. Uh, some of y'all folks haven't even been here to visit Jen and I yet, which we're gonna work on soon hopefully hopefully soon some shared spaces but yeah. just the investment you folks have continuously come back with to be like what does idaho need what are we missing um how are folks best going to be supported not just as a staff but also the community as a whole um and i think that's always been legal voices intention but the way that you all are um, making sure that happens as a senior leadership team supporting us as staff has been so significant. And I think mm -hmm. um, you want to share just a little bit about kind of the community lawyering piece, because I know that yeah. was still really new to me, um, coming Absolutely. into the conversation and just kind of what that looks like. Sure. Well, like I said, Legal Voice had really followed a traditional model for nonprofit advocacy organizations, which was to pursue impact litigation. So that's where you take a case that will change the law. And I think all of us realize that changing the law doesn't necessarily mean that parties obey the law or that people are protected because if they don't know what the rights are as far as the law is concerned, it's not that much of a benefit to them. So when we recognized that there were whole communities that were you know, not really protected by the law in the way that a lot of people think, um, we recognize that we needed to approach legal strategies differently. Um, we also recognize that, you know, our legal system was built out of white supremacy, and there's really so little we can do if we're just obeying and following the usual way of doing things. So we um, are lucky enough to have staff members who are experts in community lawyering, which is a different type of practice of law, which means that we first develop our relationships with community 
get a better understanding of what the community is really pushing for themselves. So the voice comes from the community, the power comes from the community. How can we support that? How can we, with this particular skill set that we have, participate with community in really pushing forward the goals that the community has. So we're not the leaders, we're not uh, coming in with an agenda, but we're, we're working at that. We're working at really developing partnerships and relationships and how, and learning from that and learning from that and growing from that and acting with our team and with our partners in community rather than for them, for example. Um, and it's just a very different way of doing things. And what we've seen in this past year of legislative advocacy, both in Washington and in Idaho, is how successful it can be when we elevate the voice of community, when we really tap into the power that is already there, but is not recognized and given the full you know, attention that it deserves. So that's that. the community lawyering model, yeah. I love that. I love that so much. And it feels so groundbreaking in so many aspects um, for us to be moving into that space. Again, building that muscle memory, not always comfortable, oftentimes <laughs> challenging to really not go into what is comfortable and what do we already know and what's the process that we already know how to navigate to do that differently and to hold space mm -hmm. differently. Um, I feel like we're doing that really well. We have a great team of folks who are helping make that happen as well. Uh, and that's just part of our commitment to Idaho. And as folks know, Idaho Gives, or maybe you don't know, Idaho Gives mm -hmm. um, started yesterday and it goes for the entire week. And Legal Voice is so excited to be in Idaho, now we on are. the ground in Idaho, mm -hmm. doing meaningful work, cultivating amazing and authentic conversations with community members, and just still mm -hmm. getting to know Idaho better. Um, and we're really hoping to have people support this week um, whatever contribution would be meaningful for you is going to really help us continue to do the work that is most impactful for communities. Um, like many folks know, uh, oftentimes C3s are operating with the support of grant work, which we love our, our funders and we love folks that are able to you know, provide those grants. And also the truth is that sometimes those grants do come with restrictions or certain um, particulars that we have to meet. Whereas dollars that come straight from you, those are considered unrestricted funds. And when we have access to unrestricted funds, our work becomes more community led, more community centric and really able to adapt to the needs of what Idaho is looking for and what Idaho communities are wanting to see from us. So we would love to have your support, um, whatever demonstration that might look like for you would be wonderful. And if you can't give, maybe it's sharing this video and introducing some of your That's network right. to Idaho who didn't know that Legal Voice was, you know, here and doing the great things that we are yet. Um, so that's kind of our ask of you today. You know, we are wrapping up, hopefully wrapping up Idaho's legislative session. They haven't said sign die yet, but we can yes. manifest that into this Friday, um, hopefully. Um, but mm -hmm. we also have some oral arguments coming up and that's where you're gonna start seeing us lean into uh, in the springtime before pride season starts. Again, we'll be that's there right. too. Um, we that's have right. oral arguments coming up for the HB 500 case. If people in Idaho remember, that's the anti-trans athlete case that Legal Voice is involved in. Um, we just won a case as well. Um, it was Almerico versus Idaho. That was a really exciting victory that was supporting um, just the autonomy of pregnant people and their um, health directives, ensuring that those are going to be honored. Um, mm -hmm. And we just, you know, we would love your support. We're super we excited to be linking arms with people in Idaho. Uh, is there anything else you want to add just to throw well, out there? You know, Chelsea, those cases actually have national attention. So Idaho is in, you know, is, is being watched by everybody around the country, which it should be, just like all of us. And um, so, you know, we hope that people will look out for news articles about the cases and just, you know, send us comments or support or whatever they can, that, um, you know, to really help us move forward and help the community with you know, the, a, a victory in all of those cases. That's what we're looking for. And, um, so you know, we would love that. Yeah. 
That's so true. Legal Voice is really helping bolster the conversation that's happening here in Idaho on so many different situations and, mm -hmm. and cr across movements. It's bolstering it to a national level um, where conversations weren't happening before. Um, mm -hmm. And we know that those um, points of litigation are really impactful for the way that, you know, trans adolescents will be able to navigate um, participating in athletics at their schools and That's right. um, the way that pregnant people are going to be honored in their bodily autonomy. So That's right. great, yeah. great absolute, absolute note on that. Um, um, the only other last thing is for folks who are able to make a contribution this week of $15 or more, they will get one of our awesome t-shirts. This is kind of our giving circle, if you will. Um, we would love for you to join uh, the Ruthless Valkyrie Bitches crew. So please come be a part of that. Um, but if there's nothing else, Kelly, I will bid you farewell for today, my friend. You too. Please stay and nourish yourself and get some sunshine today. And to, to everybody who joined us at home, uh, take care of yourself, take mm -hmm. care of each other, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, friends.